Perfect? Bang on my chest if you think I'm perfect. Go ahead, bang on it. No heart? You gotta have heart. Miles and miles of heart. This is Patchwork Heart Ministries Young Catholics Respond, brought to you by Breadbox Media. Now, here's your host, Bill Snyder. Thanks, Adam, and welcome to the program, everybody. I am Bill Snyder. This is Young Catholics Respond, and thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the program today. I want to remind you that you can connect with our ministry at patchworkheart.org, and you can also find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. All you have to do is search for Patchwork Heart Ministry. If you like this program, please share it on social media, folks. We can always use a boost on social media. It is a big help to have you, our listeners, tell others about our work here at Patchwork Heart Ministry. Don't want to take too much time talking about ourselves, though. On today's program, I am blessed to be joined by Dr. Mary Healy. And we're going to have a great conversation with her because Dr. Healy is a professor uh, of, of sacred scripture at Sacred Heart Major Seminary in Detroit. And she is also an international speaker on topics related to scripture, evangelization, healing, and the spiritual life. Uh, she is the general editor of the Catholic Commentary on Sacred Scripture and the author of its two volumes. Uh, she has numerous books out. One of her newest ones is Healing. And it's such a pleasure to have you joining me today, Dr. Healy, on the program to talk about healing and uh, why young adults need it in the world today. Thank you, Bill. Great to talk to you. It's my favorite topic. <laughs> we can tell. It's, it's <laughs> awesome. Um, so I, I should lead in just a little bit that uh, you're actually going to be speaking at the uh, National Leaders and Ministries Conference, uh, which is going to be in St. Louis this year. Uh, mm -hmm. from November 8th to the 10th. And you're going to be talking about um, healing, obviously, like we're going to be talking about on today's program. And so I want to encourage our listeners to, to register for the program and also to come and see you speak on the topic. But um, to kind of lead us into that conference and, and, those, and that opportunity for people, let's talk a little bit about the state of the world today, especially with young people, and that there is a lot of brokenness out there in the world. There's a, a great need for healing. And so what are some of the need, what do we what do we do about that? What what are some of the sources? Yeah. yeah, we we really are living in a time of unimaginable brokenness in so many ways. Um you know, I just saw a statistic the other day that the the number of suicides among 10 to 14-year-olds has more than doubled in less than 10 years. And you can add to that substance abuse, uh, various kinds of addiction and unsafe, risky behaviors, loneliness, depression. And we have to look at all that and say something is wrong. There is tremendous brokenness in our society today, especially among young people. And there are various reasons for that. But I would say the deepest reason, the one that underlies all the others, is that we live in a culture that has turned away from God that has essentially banished God to the margins and said, you know, it's okay if you want to worship him once a week, but don't try to bring God into public life and don't try to bring God into our culture and our decisions. And therefore, we're, we live in a society of the absence of God, and that um, absence of God has left a, a spiritual vacuum that people are trying to, to fill with all kinds of other things. And at the same time, we live in a culture of narcissism where people are basically taught and encouraged to always put self first. And of course, when everybody is doing that, then it becomes more and more difficult to sustain really deep and self-giving relationships. So there's the breakdown of the family, breakdown in marriages, and all kinds of um, sexual use and abuse of others. So uh, people I talk to who work all the time with young adults, uh, like high school teachers and youth ministers and college professors, um, have been telling me that even in the last 10 years, the young people that they see are more wounded, more hurt by various traumas in life than they've ever seen before. And, and I really believe that it's for that very reason that God, 
who is so merciful, even though this culture has by and large rejected him. God is pouring out a grace of healing like never before. And there are miracles going on in our time, healings and signs and wonders that are just incredible. And and the Lord is reminding the church that this is part of our heritage. It goes all the way back to the beginning of the church. This is part of what Jesus commanded us to do, to heal the sick. And the Lord is pouring out a grace of healing uh, on a scale that is, I think, unprecedented since the early centuries of the church. So we're, we're living in a, a very sad time in some ways, and yet a very exciting time, because God, wherever sin abounds, God's grace abounds all the more, and His grace is abounding for healing. Yeah, you know, I, I want to talk about, you gave us so much to chew on uh, in what you were talking about, and a lot of it um, is... Uh, it's talking about how much brokenness and woundedness is when you when you mentioned that the suicide rate for ten to fourteen year olds has doubled in ten years, that's an alarming statistic. Uh, the amount of mm-hmm. substance abuse, the addictions, the depressions. Um, I want to talk about the the that source of healing for a moment because young adults, um, me re, me being one and kind of on the uh, outer cusp of the young adult. Uh, cut off, I think, at age 35 in the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. But uh, we we kind of uh, search and bounce from from one thing to the next. I, I I know at least in my life, I I spend a period of time. Okay, you know, I you know what? I think everything will be fine if I just get the next iPhone that's coming out. I think everything will be fine if I mm-hmm. just get this. And there's there's so much distraction, so much cultural, uh, you know, confusion out there. How, yeah. what, what is that? What is the source of, of the healing that, that we need? Where do we turn to? Because I think people are turning all over the place to, to, to fill those needs. And then, as you mentioned, the substance abuse, the addictions, the depression, it all kicks in. So where do we turn to? Yeah, right. Right. Well, of course, our culture is telling us that um, it's in material goods or it's in pleasure, uh, including sexual pleasure or relationships that we will find our fulfillment. But Ultimately, we cannot find fulfillment apart from God. We're created by Him and for Him. And the human heart will never find what it truly longs for without God. And God sent us His beloved Son, Jesus, to be our Savior, to reconcile us to Him, to to give up His life for us. So ultimately, healing comes in Jesus Christ. Now, many people don't, um, they don't know that, or they don't believe that. Many of them have have even been churchgoers, but they've never really heard the good news of the gospel in a way that captivated them, in a way that convinced them, Uh, because often it hasn't been preached with conviction and clarity. But but that's the real truth, that God has, has designed us for something so much more than the material, having the material needs and desires of the body filled. I mean, all of that, it, ultimately, it's unsatisfying, it's superficial, it's cheap, and it only leads people into, into bondage to various kinds of addictions or attachments. So God himself is the source of healing, and, and the good news is that he, he is never reluctant to heal us. He is never um, resistant to one who who turns to him sincerely and asks him for help and and grace and healing. He doesn't always answer our prayers immediately in the way we ask them, but he does always answer our prayers. And and young people who turn to God are the most on fire. (laughs) And this generation, young Catholics and other Christians who are... uh, giving their lives to Jesus are so inspiring because they get set on fire and they are bringing the the grace of God's mercy and healing to other people in a way that is, is just remarkable. Yeah. You know, that's beautiful. I want to pick up on something you mentioned there where you said, God is never resistant or reluctant to heal us. Um, I, I, I know a lot of, um, 
I, I in in addition to being a, uh, a a young adult Catholic, I'm also an Uber driver, <laughs> and oh, <laughs> and I get to encounter a lot of people um, yeah. out there um, in in the world, and so many of them would would say, I tried this, but it didn't work. You know, I I, I can't tell you how many times I have that conversation, you know, with mm. with people. Oh, I mm-hmm. I tried that, but 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 what is trying it? You know, what is what is jumping yeah. in uh, really mean? What is, what are those things that are going to lead us to the healing? As you mentioned, God doesn't you know just always you know heal immediately. He doesn't always um, show us immediately, but He's never reluctant or resistant to the possibility of it um, for us. So so what? What do we have to? Is there anything we have to do? Well, one thing is we have to realize that God is not a quick fix. Um, Jesus is not fast food. Um, he, he's not a silver bullet. Um, what we need and what God wants for us is a relationship with Him, and a relationship doesn't happen instantaneously. Of course, that's another big error that our culture purveys to young adults that you can. You can make a relationship instantly or overnight, and, and that's a complete illusion. A relationships take time, and so um, building a relationship with God is um, is something that you you need to develop over time. And God will be there every step of the way, and it won't always be easy, but He will lead a person who is sincerely seeking a relationship with Him. He will lead them deeper and deeper in that relationship. And, and th- sometimes it will be, um, you know, through a, an amazing world rocking earth shattering experience, like, like St. Paul on the road to Damascus. Other times it will be, um, by slow growth, but spending time praying, you know, a little bit of time connecting with God every day, spending time with other people who have the same aspirations and goals spending time with people who love God and, and want to grow in faith and grow in holiness. You know, if you don't hang out with people like that, you can't expect that your relationship with God is going to grow. And feeding your mind with truth is crucial as well. Feeding your mind with good material. First of all, Scripture itself, the Word of God, but also good books, good audio uh, recordings, um, and conferences, listening to people who who also have strong faith and whose hearts are on fire. You know, we need to fill our minds with truth because we're getting filled with the world's bad news all the time. When I say bad news, I mean not just bad news of crimes and things. I mean right. all the lies that the world purveys to us. So we, if if we are serious about wanting to know the Lord and and wanting to have a deep relationship with Him, we have to do whatever is needed to fill our mind with the truth. That's beautiful. Uh, For our listeners, you're listening to the voice of Dr. Mary Mary Healy. Uh, We're talking with her today about healing. Uh, Believe it or not, 13 minutes flies by so fast, Dr. Healy. I have to take that short break. (laughs) Uh, But then when we come back, we're going to continue that conversation with you and uh, particularly want to talk with you about how, what we can do on the practical level as young adults, as Catholics, uh, to, to help other people uh, out of those situations in life. So we'll resume our conversation on the other side of this break. Thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Judy Hare was a bankrupt, homeless, drug-addicted college dropout on the brink of divorce, but is now a seminary graduate and devoted wife and mother of four children. What happened? Find out in her autobiography, Shattered, How God Restored My Heart and Life. Her journey of faith has been called brutally honest, truly inspiring, profound, heartbreaking, and life-changing. Shattered is available now for only $15 on her website, judyhair.com, on amazon.com, or at your local Catholic bookstore. As Judy says, It is never too late to become the person you deserve and desire to be. So stop wishing for change and start doing something about it by reserving your copy of Shattered Today.
Patchwork Heart Ministry is committed to sowing hope into broken hearts by helping young people encounter the love of Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church through prayer, storytelling, and media initiatives. We invite you to prayerfully consider supporting this mission financially. Mail your tax-deductible donation to Patchwork Heart Ministry at P.O. Box 563, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, zip code 53147, or visit patchworkheart.org to donate online. That's Patchwork Heart Ministry, P.O. Box 563, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, 53147, or online at patchworkheart.org. The words spoken by Our Lady of Guadalupe to Juan Diego nearly 500 years ago are almost too good to be true. Asking that a temple be built at the site of her apparition, she promised that here I will give all my love, my compassion, my help, and my protection to all those who love me, cry to me, seek me, and who have confidence in me. Here I will listen to their weepings and alleviate all their sufferings, necessities, and misfortunes. My name is Alan Napleton and I live in Dallas, Texas. I have visited her shrine in Mexico City dozens of times, bringing my own petitions and have found Our Lady to be true to her word. Over the years, I have brought hundreds of pilgrims to this holy place without incidents and have now founded Viva Guadalupe, a nonprofit that provides safe and inexpensive pilgrimages to Our Lady's Shrine. If you would like to take Our Blessed Mother up on her promise and learn more about how you can visit this special place of grace, please visit vivaguadalupe.org for more information. At times it seems like the world today is filled with so much division, bigotry, and hatred. So it's up to us to make sure that we get back to the basics, and that is Jesus Christ and his message of faith, hope, and love. Faith, Hope, Love with John and Morgan Bender is a new project that seeks to do just that by engaging and inspiring Catholics within the Archdiocese of Milwaukee and beyond. Read personal faith stories, interviews, and news all by visiting the Faith, Hope, and Love blog.blogspot.com or follow us on Twitter at Johnny Bender MKE. Hi, everybody. Bill Snyder here. Just want to thank you for listening to this episode of Young Catholics Respond. And as a founder of Patchwork Heart Ministry, we have so much more going on than just our podcasts. Check it out at patchworkheart.org. This is Martha Fernandez Sardina with your Love Minute. Are you married? Do you wish you were married? Do you know that marriage is a love relationship, a lifelong love relationship? It requires a lot of love giving. What your spouse needs the most, what your spouse deserves the most, is you. Time with you, your listening, your attentive listening, your heart, your love. Love requires you to open up and allow the other to enter in. Love is cultivated by spending time together. Love is cultivated every time you go on a date, when you pray together, when you make sure that the sun does not go down on your anger. Would you want to have a happy marriage in which you give love and get love? Learn. Learn how to love. Spending time with the beloved of our souls, Jesus Christ. Marriage is worth it. Work on it. Find more on love at facebook.com slash remember you are loved. And remember, you are loved. Your heart is always beating, but you never have to think about it. Welcome back to Young Catholics Respond. Once again, Bill Snyder. Welcome back to this episode of Young Catholics Respond, everybody. Uh, Today my guest is Dr. Mary Healy, and we have been talking with her about healing. Uh, And we've been talking a lot about the state of the world in the first half of the program. Um, A lot of the substance abuse problems, uh, uh, addictions and whatnot, even the suicide rates among young people. And one of the things that I wanted to kind of talk with you now about, Dr. Hilly, is how do we as young Catholics, how do we as young people uh, who, who are striving for the truth and, and looking for the truth um, bring Christ's healing into those situations when we, when we encounter them? Because obviously we, can, you know, we see it on a daily basis if we're living in the world and in our jobs and in our, um, in our place in the world. So how do we bring the... Uh, healing love of Christ into those moments when we recognize that a coworker or a friend is truly broken or struggling with something beyond uh, what they can handle? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, 
because I would guess that practically every listener has some friend or relative or acquaintance who is really struggling and broken. And God has you in that person's life, partly so that you can be an instrument of his mercy and his healing and his refreshment and maybe even his joy to that person that God has put in your life. So the, really the first thing is that so many people have no idea how to begin to do that. And so we have to have a kind of mental um, revolution or a shift in our thinking, even to, un, even to realize how much God desires to heal. And secondly, that he wants to use ordinary people to do it. So that's um, part of what I'm going to be talking about in my talk at, at the conference, um, helping people realize this is actually part of the commission that Jesus gave all his followers and that he equips us for, each in a unique way. And um, you don't have to be a spiritual superstar. You don't have to be an extraordinarily gifted person to be used by the Lord for healing. And then it's very helpful to um, be exposed to the ways the Lord does that. And there are good resources that are becoming available now for helping people very concretely learn, like, how do you pray with somebody? How do you pray with somebody on the spot? What kinds of things do you say? What kinds of things should you not say? (laughs) How do you um, take a balanced approach? How can you be very um, gentle and respectful of them, um, and at the same time, take steps in faith, take, take a bold risk even of faith. And, and there's a lot to learn about all that, which is, it, it's very exciting. Um, for example, there's a new documentary that just came out, it's called Revive, and it's all about what happens at a Catholic high school when the students are confronted before their eyes with the Lord's miraculous healing power. It's very exciting to see how it completely blows them away. And they are, the, they are the ones praying for each other and seeing God do incredible things. So um, that's one example of uh, how you can actually learn concretely what it looks like to, to pray with somebody who's struggling or hurting. Uh, my book, Healing, is, is another resource for that. Um, and there are other good resources out there. The the Lord is raising up an army. He's raising up an army to go out into the the battle. As Pope Francis said, the church is a field hospital. (laughs) We are meant to go right out into the midst of the battle, which is this life, and bring the healing of Christ to the, the people around us who are very often the walking wounded, profoundly wounded, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. We are surrounded by the walking wounded, and the Lord wants us to to go out among them um, without fear, but with great confidence that that we can be his instruments of healing of those um, who are so broken and in need. Yeah, you know, uh, something you just mentioned right there, fear and and having the confidence to do it are... uh, I think are probably the two things that young adults look at the most. Um, like, yeah. I am not equipped for this. You know, I am not equipped for this. <laughs> right. But, he, but, but he, but he doesn't call the equipped. Right. He doesn't call the. Yeah, equipped. that's he equips right. The call, that's right? right. And so, when when you um, go ahead. And there are there are simple ways to to get equipped, um, in the sense of just kind of knowing, you know, what's the first step to take, or <laughs> how do you even approach the the topic. How do you how do you broach the conversation? Um, you know what what do you say when you're praying for healing? Not that there's a formula or anything like that, but but it helps to um, to just watch other people doing it or hear about other people doing it, and you kind of get an idea. Actually, it's pretty easy. It's pretty simple. And and it's when, not rocket science. No, and 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 when you realize personally that the Holy Spirit is working through you, right through the very gifts. Of, of your your baptism and your confirmation, right? When you realize and you unlock the, the the power of that, the Holy Spirit is working right there with you. You don't have to have every word. You don't have to have every 
uh, thing planned out, right? The Holy Spirit's working with you right. and working through you to touch that heart that might be before exactly. him. And so... Exactly. So In you, fact, the more you, you practice um, praying for people, reaching out to people who are hurting, the more you can kind of freely just listen to the Holy Spirit and follow his promptings. You're listening to the person you're talking to, but with one ear, you're kind of interiorly listening to the Holy Spirit, and and he has something different for each person. You know, there's no um, cookie-cutter approach for God. And and as we're learning to listen to him, he'll show us what approach to take with any given person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in 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 that situation, right, it's uh, the Holy Spirit will provide, and and uh, through the practice of praying in your own in your own personal life too, right? It's important to have that foundation of prayer yourself and that routine and the mo- whatever morning, evening, whatever it is. It, it's important to have that as well, right? To have that. Uh, be- Amen. Absolutely essential. Jesus said, "I'm the vine; you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing." <laughs> so, if we don't establish a daily prayer routine, you know, it's the most important part of our day. Um, you know, even if it takes a while to build up to a really solid, disciplined, regular prayer life. But if if you don't have that, you're going to have very little to offer people spiritually. And even your good advice may be hit or miss if you don't have that daily connection with the Lord. So you're hearing from Him. Beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. The daily connection with with the Holy Spirit, as as you mentioned, Scripture. I am the vine; you are the branches. What a beautiful uh, Scripture to meditate on and to really think about, because uh, we got to be plugged in, and when we are, a- anything and everything is possible through God. Um, <laughs> That's right. Um, as, like one cardinal said, um, Jesus is like a toaster. You have to plug it in. <laughs> it's kind of a silly analogy, but you know, we got to be plugged into the Lord. If we're going to be exercising his power, his compassion, his healing, his mercy to other people, we got to be plugged into him ourselves. Then the electricity will flow. Yes, absolutely. Got to plug our toaster in for sure. Um, <laughs> I want to I want to ask you uh, just a little bit about your your continuing efforts in ministry. I, I know you're an international speaker. You serve on so many different uh, in so many different capacities. And I just want to talk with you a little bit about um, the, how people can get in touch with you, your website, drmaryhealy.com, but promote whatever else is out there for us, uh, for us and, of course, encourage uh, all the listeners to register for the upcoming conference to come and hear you speak as well. Thank you. Yes, my website is drmaryhealy.com, and um, you can get there my, my books, um, particularly the one on healing is related to what we're talking about. And then another one called the Spiritual Gifts Handbook. And that's uh, more broadly about um, all the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit and how, you know, what they are, how they work, how we can discern which ones we have. Um, And you can look at my upcoming events also on on that website, on the events page. And um, I love to see young adults at my events. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Dr. Hilly, looking forward to meeting you and seeing you uh, at the NSC conference. Uh, I want to mention to listeners that it is uh, St. Louis. You can, uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, you can go to nsc carascenter.org to register uh, for the conference and hear Dr. Healy and all of our amazing speakers that are going to be there for the conference. So, uh, Dr. Healy, uh, thank you again so much for spending time. For being, uh, for being here today with me on Young Catholics Respond. You're welcome, and thank you, Bill. God bless you, and God bless everybody who's listening. Amen. Well, this has been an episode of Young Catholics Respond. Until next time, from all of us here at Patchwork Heart Ministry, I'm Bill Snyder. Keep beating to your Catholic heart. You've been listening to Young Catholics Respond, a radio initiative of Patchwork Heart Ministry. To learn more about our ministry and program, visit us at patchworkheart.org. Or to get exclusive access and early ministry updates, become our patron on Patreon by searching for Patchwork Heart Ministry.